Hello guys, it's me again, Unstable Voltage, with another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. In the last video I mentioned that I was going to be starting to convert my facility to run on biofuel as opposed to peat bars, so we're going to start that process today by creating another forestry mod machine. And the machine we're going to build is this, the squeezer. Quite a basic and simple little machine that sole purpose is to turn certain objects into liquid form. The reason I want it is I want to be able to convert all of the leftover seeds I have from the wheat farm into seed oil. I can use this seed oil as a cheap and effective fuel for the biogas engines. So let's pop on into the workshop and see about building one of these. Okay, and here we are. So, over to the crafting table. These are very, very easy to build and put together and very, very cheap to make. You're going to need a sturdy casing, which is just a square of bronze. You are going to need a glass block at the top and bottom, and then you require six tin ingots, three down either side. In shape crafting, that will give you a squeezer. Now, I've got the perfect place for this. I'm actually going to put it outside, so head on out with me. Okay, so we're now outside at what was the site of the old wheat farm, and I destroyed that after building the multi-farm a couple of episodes ago, as it's now redundant. However, it's a very useful place for me to build the squeezer. I've already put another squeezer inside the main workshop, which I can use for one-off projects, but this squeezer is pretty much going to be dedicated to a single task. Now I'm going to need to have lots of space to store the seed oil and an ideal place to build tanks is outside because you've got a lot of room to build. Secondly we've also got the original chest here from the old wheat farm that's already full of seeds that I need to use up. I've already removed the wheat and put that in the moistener to turn into mulch. And also when the wheat farm was here I actually had a network of pneumatic pipes running from the peat bog supplying peat to the peat fired engines and I intend to use those same pipes to supply peat to the engines for the squeezer in the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the squeezer down uh, right here in the middle of the area and I'm going to take a peat fired engine and I'm also going to need a pneumatic tube and I'm going to put the peat fired engine here next to the squeezer and the pneumatic tube here on the back of the peat fired engine and hopefully now the pneumatic tubes have detected that there is a peat fired engine connected it should start sending peat along the pipes. Now the reason that I've actually put the engine here with the pipe going into the back as opposed to putting the engine directly over the pipe is if you pipe things in from the side of an engine they will go into here which is actually where the uh, ash output goes we want the peat to go in through the back so it appears in the right slot and hopefully that should start arriving soon and there we go the peat started arriving it only took about 30 seconds from attaching the engine and it's now filling up from the peat bog storage which is absolutely fantastic so we are going to need a lever to turn this engine on and off let's pop it around the back so it's out of the way so there we have our lever for our engine and you can see it's still getting peat going in if we look it's nearly full and still more peat arriving fantastic so let's go and get our seeds out of the chest now it can hold quite a few i'm not going to take them all out for now but let's pop those seeds into the squeezer and what we are going to do is turn it on so there we can see our engine's working it's nearly full of peat bars already which is fantastic 62 63 there we go look at that full engine and then the remaining peat will just go back down back into the chest now the squeezer works quite similar to a lot of the other machines in forestry the more power it has the faster it will work so as you can see the progress arrow here is actually quite slow however it will actually take quite a few seeds before you start to see any seed oil appear here in the valve so let's just give it a few minutes and I'll cut to where it started to produce some seed oil for us. Okay so we've already used eight seeds and it's now only just started to uh, register that we have some seed oil in the storage tank. The engine has started to heat up a little now so it's working a bit more efficiently but you can have multiple engines connected to it so we'll leave that for a few minutes just to process some more seeds and let's just pop back into the workshop. Okay, so inside the workshop I have another squeezer here and that already has uh, some seeds in there, a little bit of seed oil. Uh, I'll just turn the engines on and let them get warmed up because this is connected to the bank of engines downstairs. 
Now one of the things you're going to need to do is get the seed oil out of the squeezer and the best way to do that is with either cans, capsules or cells and the easiest thing to do is get some tin and make uh, basically an upside down bucket uh, and that will give you from three tin ingots 12 cans and what you need to do with those cans is if you pop them in the squeezer on this slot here so it's the uh, leftmost of the bottom two slots then when you actually get enough seed oil uh, in the main tank it will start to produce cans of oil now as you can already see from the progress bar this is working a lot faster than the uh, squeezer we've got outside connected to a single engine but it doesn't matter because that squeezer is going to be used for one purpose and one purpose alone I can leave it happily ticking away on the single peat fired engine that's outside and there we go we have our first uh, seed oil can so you need to get the seed oil up to about here before you've even got enough to fill one can and this isn't the most efficient way of doing things I actually want to be able to store the seed oil all in one place where I can then pipe it directly into my biogas engine so let me just quickly flick the switch here and turn these engines off and pop back outside so back out to our original squeezer and the engine is warming up nicely and if we're looking here we are starting to get some seed oil, not a lot but it is working. So what I want to do is be able to keep my seed oil outside. So I'm going to build some tanks, now these tanks are actually nice and simple, these are just the uh, standard build craft tanks and they're pretty much just made from glass, very easy and simple to make and I'm going to make uh, three of those if I can get another one on the top, Whee, there we go, uh, and that will hold quite a few buckets now what we need to do is be able to pipe into there so we're going to use uh, waterproof wooden pipe cobblestone waterproof pipe and a redstone engine so these are all buildcraft pipes the wooden waterproof pipe will allow us to suck the seed oil out then we want our cobblestone waterproof pipes to connect that up to the tank and it doesn't matter where on the tank it can go it can go around any of the sides top and bottom it makes no difference whatsoever we are going to put down the redstone engine at the back connected to the wooden pipe so that will actually power the pipe to draw the oil out and we are going to put the lever down behind it to turn it on. So if I flick the lever and the engine has now started up and you can already see the seed oil is starting to pass its way through the pipe and we now have seed oil in the tank. Now as you can see we've already uh, we've left it on for more than a few minutes, we've squeezed almost half a uh, stack of seeds and we still only have the tiniest little amount of seed oil in the bottom but imagine this thing being left on sort of overnight how much seed oil we're going to get it doesn't take a long time to fill up one of these tanks so what I'm going to do in the next episode is look at the railcraft tanks now these are a lot bigger they're a multi-block tank and they can store so much more uh, ver and different liquids than these things can and the capacity of them is absolutely amazing so that's what we're going to be looking at in the next video so once again guys thank you for joining me on this that has been the first step of an exciting new project I hope you found this video informative and entertaining and if you have please like share and subscribe so I can continue to make these videos and as always if you've got anything you'd like to see in a future video if there's a particular machine or item that you'd like to see me build and demonstrate either send me a message or leave it in the comments below and then on our next video we will start to build our railcraft tanks so until then thank you for watching I have been Unstable Voltage goodbye